Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And since it's Women's History Month, I'm here today to talk to you about Wish Upon a Star, the 1996 movie. This is a body swap movie and it's my all time favorite body swap movie. I've only seen two others. I've seen, I believe, I, I believe now. <laughs> I've seen the original um, Freaky Friday from like the 70s movie, not the Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan one. I haven't seen that yet, but I really, really want to. And I've never seen the other Disney Channel Freaky Friday movie. But I remember I saw, I think the original Body Swap, not Body Swap, the original uh, Freaky Friday from 1970 something. And I also saw this other one, I can't remember the name. But it stars this one actress named Erin, and basically she was a man originally, and then she died, and then God decided, okay, you can have one more chance at life, but I'm turning you into a female, and you can stay alive unless you fall in love and have a baby. And so he put him back on earth as a woman. And then, of course, towards the end, she got married, had a baby, and died and stuff like that. So those are the only body swap movies I've ever seen, except for this one. And this one's my all-time favorite. It came out 27 years ago. And surprisingly enough, it's a Disney Channel movie. <laughs> Which is insane, because one, it's not wacky. And two... There's some raunchy stuff in this movie, and there's some curse words and stuff, but very few. And Disney Channel used to show this on repeat all the time. Now, I didn't watch it in 96 because I didn't have cable at that time, but around the early 2000s, I did have cable, and I was able to see this movie. And it introduced me to both Danielle Harris and Catherine Heigl. It was my first time ever seeing them in anything. I was smitten, man. Like, I was floored. I was like, whoa, they are hot. <laughs> and so I remember back in the day, like the good old VHS and stuff like that. I remember like, ah, oh, man, I used to watch this movie. I always watched the movie late and stuff. When I recorded it on VHS, I got to the point where they threw the pennies in the toilet, pretending like it's a wishing well. And so I never saw the, the first beginnings of the movies and how like the um, Alexa uh, character really was and how mean she was and stuff, or all the parents. Watching the entire movie now makes sense when it comes to the parents and why they are so lenient the way they are and stuff. And so I remember, you know, I had on one VHS tape, but I needed the extra room on that. So then I copied that VHS tape on another one. And of course, when you do that, yeah, it ain't all that great. <laughs> so I didn't turn up the volume and it was kind of like low volume. So I tried to do it again and that messed it up again. And I put it on one tape that ended up getting really scratched up really bad. So for the longest time, I never had that movie. And so by that time, Disney Channel stopped showing it because, well, okay, when I originally watched this movie, right, like when I, I rewatched it again just last night because I have it on DVD finally and stuff. And so, like, I remember every scene that happened, except for, of course, the beginning stuff. And so when it got to the table dance part, yes, it's a very raunchy table dance part. And she's wearing Dominatrix clothes. This made it to Disney Channel. <laughs> but they edit the dance and everything so i watched it on dvd i'm like what's all these extra scenes well it was too raunchy to put on tv basically what they put on tv was just her getting up on the table walking around then when she takes her jacket off it goes to like the crowd wooing and on and then it goes to the principal turning it off and making her put her jacket on that's the edited part in the unedited part, oh, it's a lot more raunchier than that. <laughs> I 
I'm still shocked and amazed that made it to Disney Channel. This is back when Disney Channel wasn't silly and goofy with the Hannah Montanas and the wizards and like, you know, the villains of um, Valley View and stuff like that. This is back when they had a bit more realistic ability to them. Um, I've already talked about my older videos about like, you know, Zoog Disney versus the Disney Channel era. Go watch that video. It's a huge difference in contrast and everything. This was back in the Even Stevens, the Lizzie McGuire, Lizzie McGuire, the original Hannah Montana, and um, like things like So Weird in the Jersey, which the Jersey still is not on Disney Plus. It is on YouTube, uploaded illegally, of course, and that's the only way I was able to watch a few episodes just to see what the world is about because I missed it back in the day and stuff. I still don't know why they won't put it on there for. But, um, yeah, and so because I was unable to watch it on VHS and everything that I recorded, I'm like, man, I'm going to look for this on DVD. Well, there's a problem because it's Disney Channel and Disney Channel really doesn't like putting the stuff on DVD. All the copies were sold out. Yes. And for the longest time, and I do mean the longest time, they were sold out. And I was unable to ever get my hands on like a copy. Then they had some used ones, but I didn't want that. And then the vultures put it up for like 50 something dollars on certain websites. I ain't no way I'm going to get that. But then Disney Channel had a change of heart and they re-put it back out on DVD. And I was able to get it for a much cheaper price. And I've been so happy ever since all those years ago. I have no idea if it's out on DVD no more, but you can pretty much now finally watch it on streaming for the longest time it was never on streaming and somebody had to upload it illegally on youtube now it's uploaded legally on youtube and it's on other type of streamings it's on roku channel it's on tubi it's on um other crap oh pluto tv so you can watch this movie in a, uh, in a way you can't and it's a great movie it's like there's, there's really to no budget, but it doesn't matter um, because the only part that really sucks is when they transform back and the CGI is kind of like, they just flip, spin the camera around over and over and over and it's just kind of weird. Um, but it just worked for that time era. Nowadays, if you see like a Freaky Friday movie, there's tons of like CGI body swapping the bodies and stuff like that. And it's insane that this came out on Disney Channel. Then, then about 20 years later, Disney Channel going to make like a second Freaky Friday movie. And it's funny because they made the first Freaky Friday movie with Jimmy Lee Curtis and stuff like that. But it was um, an actual Disney movie, movie, movie. But then the second one they came out with was a Disney Channel movie. And of course, like, oh, they make it as wacky as possible. I saw the trailer for the second one, but I didn't watch the movie. But like with this movie, there is still comedy and hijinks and shenanigans. It's just not over the top Disney Channel-ish. You know what I'm saying? This was back during a time of Zoog Disney. And Zoog Disney is my one of my favorite eras of Disney Channel because things didn't get too crazy. I do like some of the crazier stuff like Wizards and Jesse and stuff like that. But sometimes it can be a bit much. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, so one interesting thing about this movie is that Katherine Heigl, she plays Alexa Wheaton, and she's supposed to be the older daughter in the movie, right? And she's so tall, like she's really, really tall, right? And so, but she's actually the youngest in the movie because Danielle Harris, who plays Haley, she's a year older, but... Danielle is like five foot. <laughs> so you really get the impression that she is the youngest and everything. And this movie is like beautifully written, acted. Like, you know, you really get the sense that they swapped bodies in real life and acting like the other person is so great. However, I will say this, when you watch like the beginning of the movies and you see how Haley is, Haley is very grungy, very alternative, um, baggy clothes. She's really smart and she doesn't have much expression in the, um, before the body swap. And so when like, you know, 
they swap bodies, all of a sudden, Haley is more bubbly and giggly and smiley. And I'm thinking to myself, that's not how she acted. But you got to stop and think about it from her point of view. She always wanted to be her older sister. So this is where all the bubbliness and the, the smiling and the, um, the gooberish stuff starts to come from and everything. So basically, it's just like she acted more like um, the actress acted more like, you know, a younger person. Sometimes that does happen in like body swap type thing but you gotta think about the mindset of the Haley character she finally gets what she wants and so like but like i said before she didn't uh, her like danielle and Catherine did one amazing job of acting in this movie i remember because remember i said like i missed the beginning part so i didn't know just how mean alexa really is and stuff and she is mean. She's the original Gina George and everything. Like, literally. And she is very preppy. She's rude. She uses people. She comes up with, she's the queen bee. And she made up all these rules for her friends to follow her lackeys and stuff. And so, like, she dresses like a cross between that of, like, the clueless girls from the movie and a streetwalker <laughs> but the clothes are very stylish like boy i missed like the 90s and fashion like i was missing what both Haley and alexa were wearing and stuff and those were some good clothes back in the day and you don't see that no more but yeah she dresses because you know how the queen bees are they dress like fashion models and stuff and street walkers like something you'll never see it's something you always see in these tv shows and these movies pretty little liars um screen queens clueless they always dress like high-end fashion model like street walkers and stuff and so like <clears throat> When she swaps, of course, like, you know, and then what was her name with, um, 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 Haley, um, back to her. So she's more the down to earth person, the bag of your clothes. She's very intelligent, smart. She only has one friend in the movie, but she does have one love interest, the new dude who moved in across the street. And he's kind of like her grungy, you know, and the type of person that play hacky sack, you know, back in like the 90s. But, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. I remember people like that, the baggy clothes, the flannels and stuff, ah, the fashion. And so, like, Haley is in love, crushing on her older sister's, like, boyfriend, right? Now, since this is online, I won't go into too much detail and stuff like that. Um, you can just watch it for yourself. I'll give you the good, the good, like, synopsis. And also, you know, this movie's been out for 27 years. And, like, people always wanted to know more about the behind the scenes and this and that. There are no interviews whatsoever until I found one on YouTube last night. Catherine Heigl. And so, I remember, I remember I tried to watch, like, a good couple of stuff Catherine's been in. Not much, but a good couple of stuff. I've seen, like one tv show she was i said well i seen one episode of gray's anatomy she was in i saw one military show she was in just the, the first episode and um i saw one movie called valentine she was in she didn't like valentine she don't like anything she stars in Gray's <laughs> anatomy that one um knocked up movie <laughs> <laughs> and so like she started to get like a reputation as being like the Shannon Doherty of Hollywood and stuff but I like Katherine Heigl like a lot of people don't like her in Hollywood but I like her and stuff you know and like the things that she say about the stuff she's been in doesn't really offend me but it's kind of like dude like it's like if you really didn't want those type of movies why did you star in them and stuff and I don't know what the deal with the whole Grey's Anatomy thing is but yeah, that whole Grey's and that, like, that, that sadly, that, because I, I like her as an actor. She can really act. But sadly, that speech she made about Grey's Anatomy and the award she won and, or nominated and stuff and that whole Seth Rogen, like, knocked up movie type thing, that really hurt her career to where she got blacklisted in Hollywood to where nobody wanted to work with her because she kept complaining about everything she starts in. And this was like the third thing she like complained about. And so like, 
So then she had to go into business for herself and produce her own stuff. And I hope she makes a huge comeback one day because I really like her acting. She looks amazing and stuff. Like she still looks the same. And um, like she has family, she adopts kids. And even Danielle Harris, she needs like a, a good comeback too because she's an amazing actress. And you know, she's best known for the Halloween movies after Jamie Lee Curtis left. And in my opinion, even though Jamie Lee Curtis is now the face of the Halloween movies, you gotta give it to Danielle. Danielle picked up the slack, even though her movies, from what fans say, because I've never seen them, fans say they're not that great. Um, she put up the slack, you know what I'm saying? And she was the face of the movies when Jamie left, and then Jamie all of a sudden came back when her Hollywood status started to fade away and then she became the face of it and she was and then Danielle was never asked to come back to like that of the Halloween franchise except for the Rob Zombie ones and so she's been wanting to come back fans have wanted her to come back but now her movies seem to be completely different canon they're no longer canon to the actual storyline and stuff and that's quite a shame because she picked up the slack and when somebody else didn't want to come back and she's a really good actress and stuff and she looks great and amazing and you know so it kind of sucks that um i don't never really hear nothing from her no more and stuff and i remember when i talk about like the interviews of this movie i found one on youtube last night so i'm thinking great i'm gonna get to hear all this amazing stuff about like the movie and this and that no, it was just Catherine complaining. <laughs> well, first she mentioned how like the movie was filmed in Utah and now she lives in Utah and how she was 17 when she did the movie and it was her first movie she ever did. And she did a great job for her first movie. But then this is what she complained about. So there was some guy who made a comment about the movies. And he was, she was talking about how, like, you know, back in those days, she was working out every day. And some guy commented that she had thunder dot, um, I can't talk, <laughs> thunder thighs and everything. I know the scene he's talking about is the locker room scene when she body swapped and then she's putting on her uniform and she doesn't dress all that revealing, but of course Alexa does. And so like her, and you see like a lot of her thighs, which look amazing by the way. And so that really upset her and stuff. But that's all she talked about in the movie. I'm just like, dude, I want to hear more about the movie and stuff. And so this movie is like I said before, a bow body swap. Yeah, Alexa, who's like the queen bee, mean, rude, doesn't like her sister whatsoever and treats her like crap. And then you have her sister Haley, who's like nice and smart and quiet and shy and she only has one friend and her friend what they like to do is when alexa is gone they like because they get out of school um earlier than her for some reason because alexa's always doing something else they go to her room read her diary and try on her clothes <laughs> oh and listen to her music and stuff they had different tastes in music one likes more grunge the other one likes more pop and rock and so like they, you know, they, you know, that's what teens do. You know, they go through their older, like, sibling stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what the siblings just, that's just what they do, you know? And so the parents, they don't like the way, well, the mom doesn't like the way Alessa dresses because she dresses like a streetwalker and she wants to say something about it. But the dad's more lenient. So it's like daddy's little girl, you know, he's all like, oh, if you try to stop her, she'll just do something worse, which she did in the past, you know. So this is why they have such a lenient personality throughout the entire movie whenever their kids are expressing themselves and dressing like hookers and stuff when they're trying to get back and revenge and everything. And so like, I always wonder that part, you know. And so one thing about like Alexa is that all her rules is like, you know, they can't bring sandwiches to lunch. They have to eat like, you know, fruit and vegetables. They have to drink soda. And not only that, but they can only date a guy for three months and then they have to break up with them because they have to spread their possibilities out and all kind of other dumb queen bee type rules and stuff like that. Right. And she's the one who made them all up. And so, one night, 
um, Haley, who always wants to be her older sister, sees a falling star or a shooting star, I should say. And so, like, she makes a wish when she sees Haley and her boyfriend, Jacuzzi. And that wish is to be her sister. So, of course, when they wake up, it's beautifully executed. They wake up. They don't look at they, they don't look at their alarm. They just take their hand and, like, touch it. But they should know it's in a different spot and it feels different. So, you know, Alexa, who's now in Haley's body, she, you know, she walk into the bathroom and stumbling, not really like, looking, like, you know, where she's going. And then she looks in the mirror. <laughs> and the shock of her life happens. And then here comes her sister. <laughs> <laughs> and she is flabbergasted. Oh, by the way, Haley is actually very clumsy and stuff like that. And so, like, I got to give it up for the old early Disney day. These always make people fall down, like Hillary Duff <laughs> and Lizzie McGuire, always slipping and sliding. So, anyway, so she is flabbergasted and she does not want to be in her sister's body. She hates that idea. And she wants her life back in her body. And when I say this movie is raunchy and they say all kinds of stuff, they use a curse word. She's talking about, you might have my body, my legs, my breasts. <laughs> I'm like, what? You said that on Disney Channel? <laughs> and so, like, so they try to find, well, she tries to find ways to switch them back. She gets like a birthday cake that don't work. She throws pennies in the toilet and be like, it's a wishing well. <laughs> and that don't work. So of course they have to assume the other person's identity. And this is where all the hijinks come from, you know, wearing different clothes, trying to walk in heels. Haley cannot drive and her sister has a Jeep um, that's a stick shift and everything. So it makes for some very awkward times. But of course, um, Alexa's all like, you can't drive, you don't have a license. She's all like, well, you can't reach the, um, the pedals <laughs> and everything. So next thing you know, they're playing around. And so Alexa has to drive as Haley's body. And this pisses off the principal because she's two years younger than Haley. Now, Alexa, even though she's not book smart, she's street smart, like she dresses like a street walker, but when she wants to suck up to like the principal, she brings in like a suit attire because she wants to get into college, what she has to. And so she's trying to suck up to the principal, trying to get some like recommendations, stuff like that. And also she wants to be prom queen and everything. And so like now that they swap bodies, you know, Haley, she wants to win the science fair and stuff. And so they, when they get pissed at each other, this is where all the hijinks come in and the revenge stuff. So like, you know, what is it? Haley will dress like, you know, in the same clothes um, that she wore the other day at school. And like her clothes are like just all like, her shirt's um, not tucked in, her socks, like, one's up, one down, like, all kind of crazy stuff, right? And so, like, what is it? So, um, so they start, like, just ruining things for each other, like, Alexis is ruining, like, Haley science stuff and you know pretend to be sick like one thing alexa loves to do is pretend to be sick so she can get out of stuff and that works all the time and so like it gets to the point where Haley realizes that alexa broke up with cal her boyfriend and she doesn't like that because she likes cal and she likes making out with him and stuff and so she gets back with him and that pisses off alexa and so this causes the revenge thing to where like um well actually before i get into that so like one thing alexa doesn't really do is eat that much and so now since she's in Haley bali she's eating like a pig and she's forcing Haley to do like a juice and veggie fast and stuff like that and so anyway when all like the revenge and the hijinks and stuff like that come that's when like you know <laughs> 
<laughs> Alessa puts on her dominatrix um, leather outfit from Halloween in, in Haley's body and goes to the bathroom writing, you know, what's the name? Some wench and everything. And then does basically a strip tease dance on like the table in front of the entire cafeteria. And so this causes Haley to make out with um cow in a very provocative kind of way which causes the principal to stop it <laughs> then this is when they realize they look man you need to stop fighting and everything and just help each other out so then they start helping each other out alexa who's a cd student in everything uh, um Haley helps her out and really wows like the teachers Haley has a hard time speaking in front of public, so of course Alex helps her out in everything. And so now the sisters are starting to get along, and for the first time they're actually bonding with each other. We've never seen, or they've never done that before because they can't stand each other. And so because of that now, because of like, you know, Haley or um alexa mean and Haley's body acting weird now all of a sudden Haley's love interest doesn't like her to do next door and her best friend doesn't want to be with her and so of course when Haley was in alexa body she was hanging out with her best friend and alexa's best friend started taking advantage of her this causes um this huge like fight between like the friends and all this other stuff and they help each other out in a huge way Haley convinces like you know the um the minions to like stop acting rude and all this and that and so like Haley being in Alexa body actually helps out her relationship with Cal a lot because he really loves her and all this other stuff and Alexa was just like playing him well in a way one night there's a shooting star and Haley wishes to of course um, be back in her own body she wakes up the next morning and nothing happened. So she's upset now. Where what's her name? Um, Alexa's just totally okay with everything. She's fine with everything. And so after helping each other out some more and stuff, and it's time now for prom. So while they're at prom and everything, and they're at like, you know, the pool and stuff like that. Um Haley is upset and crying and Alexa wants to know what's wrong and she's all like, you know, the spell is in um irreversible and everything. Like I tried and it just wouldn't work. And then we get this huge revelation. Now I couldn't quite hear what Danielle was saying back in the day because I recorded on VHS and my VHS was messing up. So I, I but the one part I did hear was that, you know. Alexa confesses that like, you know, she made a wish and everything. She saw the same star that um, Haley saw and that's why it didn't work and everything when Haley tried to like turn them back. That's why I always assumed for 20 something years till I watched the DVD. See, because of the VHS, I couldn't hear quite what she was saying. And so because of that, it turns out that no, actually Alexa made the wish back in the jacuzzi and everything back with the initial first wish and so i'm like wait that don't make no sense because she like he, like i had the same question Haley did like why were you so upset when we changed bodies and why would you want to be me and stuff well it turns out that alexa looked at her life and saw that you know what is she doing she's a cd student there's a guy she's in love with but she's about to break up with him because of a dumb rule she came up with and not only that, but it's like, you know, her sister has it all and she doesn't even realize it. Her sister has the best days ahead of her and she wanted that in there, I think. Like, she wanted to eat whatever she wanted to eat and not worry about her figure. She wanted to, like, you know, have friends that weren't just like minions and did everything she did, but like a genuine friend. She wanted the possibility of like starting over her life and finding a new guy and all that stuff. And she was really jealous of her sister. Her sister's smart. Her sister is kind hearted and everything. Um, guys like her, but she doesn't know it. 
And so she really wanted a fresh start and a new take on life because she realized she ruined her life. Well, all she had to do was stop being who she was. <laughs> she didn't have to wish, but then she made a wish on that star, not knowing it was magical and everything. And so she said she was not never going to admit to like wanting to be her sister and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and everything and so that was like really weird like that's the one part of the movie that is both touching in a way and kind of messed up at the same time so all she had to do was just change her evil ways it would have made more sense if like because i always assumed that when Haley saw the second shooting star and she made that wish i assumed like alexa saw the same thing and made the wish as well that would have been a little bit more sense but i get they want to go that touching route so of course they go outside and just so happens to be another shooting star. How many freaking shooting stars happen? I've never seen a shooting star in my life. So of course they make the wish, the camera spins around, and now they're back in the same, like their original bodies and stuff. And now we get to see a more bubbly Haley and everything. She's surprised. She's all like, wow, look at this dress I'm wearing. And, you know, my hair is all neat and my makeup and all this other stuff because um, Alexa always wears makeup and all this other stuff. And so, like, you know, she tells her, you know, you're my sister and I'll help you out. And then so Alexa and her friends, they make back up. And so Alexa becomes like, you know, prom queen and everything. And. Haley finally has the courage to talk to that guy who lives next door to her because see, he was in love with Alexa, or, or so he thought. Um, see, he was originally he liked Haley, but then when they swapped bodies, he liked Alexa a lot more. Uh, but he didn't know that was Haley, and so he tries to like you know come on to her while she's still dating that dude, and so that caused tension between her and Cal and stuff like that because like. Um, so now she finally, you know, and then Haley tells her, you know, like, look, man, I'm not your type. Just date my sister. That's who you like and stuff like that. So she finally was able to finally talk to that dude. Now, as for Cal and Alexa, Cal told her, you know, he loved her. And Haley was just kind of like, crap, dude. Like, even though she wants to hear that, this is not, she's not um, Alexa. So she tells her, like, look, in a couple of days, you know, just say it again and pretend like this is your first time and everything. And so when he sees the dude next door, Simon, like, you know, kiss uh, Alexa on the cheek and give her a gift and everything, he gets, like, pissed and everything, thinking she's breaking up with him again. And so she tells him, you know, straight up, like, you're the only guy for me and blah, 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 and stuff like that. And it ends with both sisters just looking at each other and being happy with their guy in their arms and... You know, and it was just like a nice touching ending. You know, they, they get their happy ending, what they want. They got to experience the other person's life and realize that, yeah, sometimes the other side is greener and sometimes it's not. And that's one cool lesson that you learn in this movie is that Haley so badly wanted to be her sister, but realize the grass is not greener on the other side. But Alexa realized the grass is greener on the other side and stuff like that. And so it was a nice teaching lesson for them both and how they were able to help each other out and stuff like that. And you don't get good heartfelt touching movies like that no more. Now if you get like a Freaky Friday movie, it's just the wackiest, craziest thing ever. Now there is a band in this movie and they're called Moonpool Centipede. I've never heard of them, but they play their music all throughout the movie and they actually get to perform at the... um at the um prom i don't know if they're still together i've never even heard of them till this day but they do have a music video out now on the dvd there's not much features there's only the commentary from like the director and stuff and that's it the movie doesn't even have a select um scenes part so you have to like keep like fast forward or like skipping through and stuff like that it's a basic dvd because disney just didn't put no effort into it and I wish it would come back out with new commentary because I really want to hear from the main actresses what it was like making from like, you know, this movie and stuff. But this movie was just a really simple, simplistic, funny movie. It has a cult following now because it has such positive reviews because they played it nonstop on Disney Channel and stuff back in the day. They don't do that now. And it's not even on Disney Plus for some bizarre reason. Maybe because of the table um, dance scene probably and everything. But yeah. It's a really great movie. You can watch it for free on all these other streaming sites. Totally check this movie out. You will really enjoy 
just the simple bonding between two sisters and trying to discover, you know, life and the other person's shoes, you know? Happy Women's History Month, everybody. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.